Hello everyone, welcome back to the H3 Platform YouTube channel. Um, last week we introduced the Falcon 3205 GPU solution and we went through all the installation and what's inside the package and we successfully added four RTX 3090s to our workstation. I took some time to move everything back to my table and we have been playing around with the GPUs for a while now. I'm going to show you about the management software of the Falcon 3205 GPU solution today. Um, without going too much, let's begin. Okay, so we'll open up our browser first. And we'll log into the management interface. So I've been playing around with, uh, with the interface for a while now. I can walk you guys through about what this management interface can help us. So we're now at the overview page. On the top of the overview page, we see resource lists. And we can see a pie chart of the PCI slot being used. And uh, currently we have four out of five slots being used. That's the four RTX 3090s we have. And one host link being used. That's the workstation we have. And for the GPU utilization graph here, we can change the time settings. So we can display the GPU utilization in the past 24 hours or 72 hours or in an hour. And here's a button to download all the GPU utilization data from the management interface. Um, so we haven't done anything with the GPUs yet. The average utilization rate is quite low right here. And under that is a PCI throughput graph. We can see the total traffic or only the ingress traffic or only the egress traffic. I'll explain what ingress and ingress means later. And again, we can choose the period of time we want to see. So 24, 72 hours. And again, you can download the graph from the management interface. And here's color tag for every GPU. So you can the information of every GPU according to the, according to the colors. <coughs> okay. And at the end, we have the PCIe link health. And we can see that all the devices are healthy now. All the links are healthy. And on the right hand side, we have thermal information. So we have um, the temperature of drawer board. That's the back fan where you place your GPUs. And the PCI switch. So there is a PCI switch within the Falcon 4205 and that's the temperature of the chip and drawer device average that's the average temperature of all four GPUs and under that thermal information panel is a system profile so we have model name, serial number, MAC address, all kind of chassis information right here and if you press the refresh button down here, you can refresh all the graphs and all the information right here. So next we have the resource management. Uh, we have two modes, topology and list. So in topology, you see the um, topology graph of the chassis. So we have one PCI switch right here and four devices linked to the PCI switch and link to another host right here. And this empty slot is the riser slot we introduced last time. So we haven't put any device into the slot, so that's empty. But we can see four 3090s right here. Um, and this icon means that the devices are linked to the host 
according to the color tag right here, they are linked to the blue host. That's our workstation. Again, you can refresh the information with the bottom down here. If you are confused with the port numbers, you can simply click this icon right here. It tells you which port is for each. So you can easily locate any problematic device or it helps you to read the topology graph easily. So we now we go to the list mode. Again, we see all the GPU information in list. And if you click on the drop down arrow right here, you'll see the detailed information of individual device. Okay. Um, next, we go to port configuration. <coughs> so, since we are under standard mode right now, we wouldn't be able to perform any port configurations. We're only able to read the default configuration of each port. And if we purchase a FNS mode license, we'll be able to configure the PCIe ports. But for now, we are not going too deep on that. Again, there's a, uh, there's a button down here you can click on and it tells you which port is which. And next we'll go to monitor. <laughs> Under monitor page, we have traffic, link speed, and error. And for traffic, we see all the numbers here, right? This right here, uh, the number on the right hand side is the ingress traffic. That means the traffic going into the PCI switch from the device. And the number right here is opposite. That's the egress traffic. And that is the traffic out of the PCI switch to the device. Uh, so there, if you are confused, that's fine. There is a little error right here. It tells you which direction the traffic is going to. So. Yeah, and link speed. Mm, there is a max link speed and current link speed displayed on the topology. And for max link speed, that simply means that the slot is a Gen 4 by 16 slot. And the current speed refers to our device. So we have a RTX 3090, and that is a Gen 4 by 16 device. If you have a, for example, 2080 tie or 2080s, that would be Gen 3 by 16. And again, we got a, we got a image right here to help you. And error. This error refers to the PCIe error. If you click on that, this window will pop out and it tells you the bad DLLP errors, bad TLP errors, port RX errors, and recovery diag errors. Um, I'm not an expert. I have no idea what that means, but I see a lot of recovery diag error recently, like pretty much since I've been using this chassis. But apparently that doesn't affect my GPU at all. So I'll leave that for now. And I've done a little bit of research on that. So apparently, um, Windows have some compatible issue with 3090s that all these mm, recovery diag errors will pop up. But that should be fine. Because I've done everything with the 3090s and I don't see any downside of this. So um, I'll forget about that. And here is a trash bin icon. If you click on that, you can clear the arrow count. But we'll leave that for now. Um, next, we'll see the system health. So under system health, we have four graphs, which are device temperature, chassis temperature, power consumption, and fan speed. And again, each slot is given in color. And if you look at the color, you can easily find the graphs of that in a specific device or specific fan, for example, right here. And 
um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, for power consumption, the gray area means the total consumption of all devices. So you can see when we turn the chassis, uh, there's a peak right here at 486 watts. Uh, but we haven't done anything with the GPUs yet, so that's the maximum you can get from idling the GPUs, I guess. Yeah, and again, you can adjust the time period you want to see on your graph. So, 24 hours, for example. And there is another uh, image to help you to locate your device. Okay. And then, the next one is chassis page. We can control the power of the chassis right here. So we can turn the device drawer off or run a power cycle if you encounter any um, compatible issues. And we're trying to fix that. So we'll run a power cycle under certain conditions. And if we want to <coughs> If we want to replace our device, for example, we can simply turn the drawer off and then pull out the drawer, and so that we can we don't have to shut down everything, but and we can still replace the, replace the GPUs. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm, next, we have maintenance. So this is where we can update the firmware of Falcon Three Two O Five. We usually release from new firmwares if there's a major bug fix or when we are releasing any new features. And to do that, we will have to go to the H3 platform website and go to the knowledge base, download, and we'll select composable GPU chassis. And you should select 4205 right here if there's any, but Currently, we have the latest firmware, so we haven't released anything new for 2205. Uh, but if we do, you will find that right here, and then you can download firmware. Let's take 4005 for example. So we can see all the resources of 4005 and go to firmware, and we can find the new firmware. Okay. <coughs> So when we release new firmwares, we'll let you guys know on our website or social media. And you can do that on your own. It's quite easy. Next, we have event log. So pretty much we have all the logs, system logs for 4205 right here. You can see that So we logged in successfully. And all the resets and stuff. We divide all the logs into three levels. So for error, that simply means any error logs we'll see. But luckily we don't have any right now, so I'll skip that part. But if you do, you might want to take a closer look at it. And for warning logs, that's all the system warnings. So including something like logging fail and um, system resets, or when your chassis cover has been opened, all those kind of uh, warning informations. And for info, we have all the all the basic information logs of of the chassis, such as uh, so like system restart, power process, logging. And we specially make a category for logs, that's the secure logs. That's everything relative to your user account, so including login logouts and password change, all those kind of stuff. So if you are sharing the chassis with someone else and they get a account, you will see what they are doing with your chassis. Last, we have settings. So setting is quite straightforward. We have done all the settings in last video. So when we 
when we do the initial setting of 4205 but if you want to modify your settings you can do that right here under the se settings page I want to talk about user management right here so you can see that our admin account is right here so we can change password by clicking on the pen icon right here so we have one two three for our password so let's change it to four five six for example and yeah we'll say no for now and if you want to add new accounts you can click on the icon right here and you can select user roles so each user role has different authorities you'll find the details in our user manual so I'm not going too deep on that and you can set the username for the new account let's say user1 and we'll give it a password 456 for example and new account will be created and you can use use the account to login to this management interface as well and for license management yes uh, I've activated a license key before but I'm still using the uh, standard mode as you can see if you want to uh, access the advanced features you will also have to purchase a license key from H3 platform and you will activate your license key right here okay and so after that you will be able to switch your modes so we set that as standard mode because we want all the GPUs um, for our old workstations but under advanced mode you will be able to share the GPUs among different hosts and if that's your requirement you might want to consider about purchasing a license um, and that's pretty much it for our user interface